Wow. Did Allison solve homophobia today on this show? Today on Poor Decisions, we're gonna be answering all of those questions you're too afraid to ask your LGBTQIA friends. And today, I have Gabby and Allison from Just Between Us with me. Being a part of the LGBTQIA community is awesome, but sometimes, People who are straight have some questions and they feel super awkward and the last thing they want to do is be offensive. So we've asked people to send us questions they might be too afraid to ask and I feel like you guys would be great at answering them. Well one, we have an advice show so yes. we're very qualified to give advice. Two, I am queer so we can answer that aspect of it. Three, I mean Google doesn't exist. So I'm so glad that these people feel like maybe they're on some sort of government watch list. They can't Google what they want to Google. Well, I feel silly being here because I can't answer any of these questions. Yes, you can. You can help. Yes. I, no, but I'm not queer. If I if I don't understand what they mean. Oh, know. I can straight explain yeah, it. Yeah, straight you? explain it. You know okay, what I mean? Great. Straight explain. Straight explain. <laughs> All right, so we have 10 questions, and for every question, we will take a little piece of the rainbow. Aww. You know? Tender. Talk Nerdy to Me always asks, how does it work? In the bedroom. Ooh. This is crazy. You love it, right? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Do you love it? I mean, it wastes so much. Here's the problem, is Allison doesn't drink because she doesn't like the taste of alcohol, oh. but these all taste like fruit. This <laughs> is gonna be a problem. So how does it work in the bedroom for, for who? That's for which kind of people? So then the follow-up question, <laughs> when you hug another woman, do you have your boobs intertwined so you can be closer to one another? When you hug another naked woman, it says. Here's a, a problem I will say is that if you're both big chested uh, women, you do have a bit of boob smushing. But also if you're a small chested lady, then it's kind of, it kind of works itself out. I hate thinking about you having sex. <laughs> Then why did you come on this show? I don't know, I didn't read the info. <laughs> yeah. I just find you so not sexual that it's so funny to me that you have sex. See, I'm... I find her very sexual. Thank yeah. you so much, Candace. <laughs> I don't want to say I hook up a lot. I do well, <laughs> and Allison is just baffled. Baffled <laughs> constantly. <laughs> How does it work? Well, if you're talking about two women, a lot of times uh, it works exactly the way you would think it would work, like fingering or oral sex or whatever, and then sometimes uh, you can use toys, uh, but- Fisting. It, fisting, yes, good, good, good ally. <laughs> Thank you. What did you tell me one time that you thought fisting was how you won? You thought the more fingers you got in, the better at sex you were. Well, Everyone. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is that uh, it works differently for different people, and since genitals don't equal gender, sometimes different people have different line, different genitals are lining up. So, for the LGBT community, it's just like a wide range. It could be anything. Do you think that the stereotype of people assuming that lesbian sex is scissoring is declining? I hope so, or, but but it could be. Some people do it, but I don't know. It's a lot of a lot of in movies. They I think maybe mm -hmm. it must look good on film. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a funny word and people really latched on. To yeah, it. <laughs> I think so too. But I also think like there's like a lot of cis gay men don't don't have anal sex. Like there's mm -hmm. like this thing mm -hmm. of like oh it's all butt fucking and like a lot of my friends that are cis gay men will be like actually that's like not really always on the menu. Like we mm -hmm. don't really mm -hmm. always do that. Because it takes a lot of preparation and shit. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of pressure to be like, oh, if I'm not doing that, am I doing it wrong? But whatever you feel is good is fine. And Sugar Rose Happy asks why the gay and lesbian community have different names for the type of people they date. So like otters, bears, oh. like all of those things. Because that's super fun. Oh, we should take a sip, sorry. This one's great too. <laughs> Cut to the end of this video, Allison is drunk. Huh? <laughs> yeah, why are there so many? I guess because it's just fun. Yeah. It's just like a fun way to describe. I mean, it's hard for me to speak for the, the gay male community, but I think people do it in the straight community too. Like boy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the LGBTQIA <laughs> community is fun, flirty, and creative. They are. Why do lesbians use strap-ons when they're not attracted to penises? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take it right <laughs> How many more shots do you got for me to this stupid ass <laughs> you like that that one? was delicious. My guess would be that it, that has nothing to do with sexuality. That it's just a, like a, a feeling and a shape and a and a and a movement more than an actual person and a sexuality. Correct. <laughs> it's about the person you're with <laughs> and not about their genitals. So, uh, what feels good to a lot of women 
surprise, feels good to <laughs> queer women too. All the toys and extras are just to make the sex with the person you like enjoyable. Yeah, there are a lot of couples, like straight couples, where the dude like wants the girl to use strap on. Doesn't yeah. mean like he's gay right. or something. I don't think but anything that you do uh, is about sexuality in the bedroom. Yeah, the it's only not... thing about sexuality is like who are the people doing it, but right. everything else is not has nothing to do with sexuality. Yeah. Weepo asked, "Does scissoring actually feel good?" I just stare straight at the camera as I'm like, <laughs> scissoring can feel good. It's just a Have you ever done it? Probably, maybe I tried it one time. I was like, man, no. You should go do it. And then come back, and then we'll, yeah, we'll just yeah. get your a findings. Quick, <laughs> we'll get a quick pickup. Well, yeah. And then we'll know how it went. Hannah1620 asked, do you think LGBTQIA people are accurately represented on TV shows and movies? No. But a lot of times they don't get really uh, enough time to be portrayed because mm. they are killed off fairly quickly. And they're also often side characters, so they're not given like as much of a rich inner life as like the main character. You know, like That's the sassy notice. gay friend, and they don't really get like fleshed out. Like, oh, what what kind of person is this? Are they more than a cardboard cutout of like mm -hmm. a lesbian who just shows up in their cat shirt to be like, you go get him, girlfriend, run mm -hmm. to the airport, yeah. whatever, <laughs> you know? And there's not a lot of like diversity. There's a lot of hesitation to say the word bisexual. They'll have a character that dated men and then she starts dating women and they're like, she's a lesbian now. Mm. If a guy dates women and then he has like a dalliance with another guy, they're like, whoa, this guy's gay now. Yeah. I don't even hear like, characters identify as queer on TV. But I'm just wondering if bisexual will never have a moment because by the time it would have, that term's not even yeah, used anymore. Queer. I have a lot of really conflicted, there are a lot of characters who are like, I don't use labels mm. and I'm, I'm so conflicted with this like young idea of we don't use labels and I am what I am and whatever. And then I'm like, but we fought so hard to free the <laughs> use of bisexual. You made it over halfway. Thank you. I'm really proud. Thank you. <laughs> A musical me asks if coming out is accurately represented in media. Mm. Oh my God, green Ooh. apple. Ooh. This is a Jolly Rancher. I remember the Ellen episode and people like, she lost all these sponsorships over it. Oh yeah. And everything. It and now I feel dumb. like it's so different now. Yeah. Glee was accurate because it was like high school and, and then when they came out, it was like no one really cared. I mean, it's probably different all over the country. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen 13 Reasons Why? No. Okay, so there's this scene where one of the characters is a closeted lesbian mm -hmm. and she has two dads and she ends up like hooking up with Hannah, the main character, and like is so embarrassed that pictures get out of them being oh, together. Okay. I feel like it wouldn't be as dramatic as they may, I don't know. When you have two gay parents, I think a lot of times you don't wanna be a stereotype, mm. so you're like mm. fighting back against it. I mean, obviously it's still difficult. Yeah. Super difficult. But, you know, I think that maybe there should be more of a casual portrayal of it on TV and in movies. Chloe Lowe, 82, asked, do you think flamboyant gays hurt or help the reputation? It's so fizzy. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> the answer, Chloe, is no. The problem with being part of a minority group is that you as an individual start to represent in a community as a whole, and that is unfair. Who you are as a person and who you choose to be and who what you behave as is not representative of all straight people. Mm -hmm. So why should one gay person or a group of gay people be representative of all gay people? The end, I solved it. Ruby B. Magic asks, why do lesbians exclude bi people from their friend groups? I'll right. break it down for you. Oh. Okay, so. What's Alton. this one? For decades, people have been angry with bisexual people because they think that it's like a, a or get off the pot situation. Amen. So with bi women, it seems like that they're often doing it for male attention. That's, I'd say, the main stereotype for women. The main stereotype for bi men is that they're actually gay and that they just like won't commit to being gay. And neither of those things are true. I think a lot of lesbians maybe think that they've had to 
to fight to be proud of who they are and then to be able to sort of like dip your toe into the world but then also get accepted by the straight mm. community at the same time. It's sort of like, it builds resentment. There should not be any infighting within, you know, ostracized groups. Everyone should be banded together. A lot of gay men treat bisexual men the same way, is that mm. they think that like, okay, but you're really gay. Or uh, straight women are not very nice and say, oh, I wouldn't date a bisexual man mm. because I think that he would secretly be gay. Uh, and there's just like a lot of, um, by phobia gen in general. Actually, statistically, bisexual people have higher rates of suicide wow. and have higher rates of depression and have higher rates of domestic violence because they, when they find someone who's willing to be with them, they'll stay no matter what. Chocolate Sleepy Bear asks, what's one thing that I will never understand as a straight person? I'd love to know that. <laughs> oh, it hits you late. <laughs> It's been like 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to relate to all of my straight friends and be like, there's nothing different about us. There's this whole queer culture too. There's like music and art and like you kind of well, just, what did you say? Parades. Parades. I think the easy answer is the same thing how like we'll never experience racism. Like right. they'll never yeah. experience homophobia. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, there's like this thing from when you're a kid, like this sort of deep like, something is wrong with me. And it's still like, I'm 28 and I'm still sort of trying to be like, you're not bad. Yeah. You're not bad. Yeah, I've never had to feel like I need to feel guilty about the way I feel romantically about it. Oh people. yeah. Everything that you see, oh man, this is so drunk. Okay, everything <laughs> that you see in the world is like Barbie and Ken getting married or like this kind of like thing. You kind of have to like mourn it and then like be born again. Mm. A Musical Me asks, what can we do to deal with ignorance? Good last question. Mm -mm. Whew. Allison, you wanna take this one? <laughs> I feel like I'm established Educate something. instead of judge. I think that mm. it's like people get very defensive and if you make them feel like a bad person then they're less likely to listen to you. But a lot of times it's like, oh, I used to think that too, but then blah, blah, blah. Or like, actually like I know this person and da, da, da. And, and not make it like an attack and instead make it like a educational opportunity. Wow, did Allison solve homophobia today on this show? Sometimes I will say it's quite tiring to feel like you have to be the educator from your group. <laughs> get with the program. But you really can't just yell, get with the program in someone's <laughs> face. I just walk my dog around the neighborhood screaming, get with the program. <laughs> when people are so ignorant, it's like, I almost feel bad for you. Oh yeah. Like, you're a sad person. I feel bad for them a lot. You know what it is? If you're queer and you're like, oh, how do I deal with this? Just be friends with other queer people. So that it's like a shorthand where you can be like, this fucked up thing happened. And they'll be like, yeah, that's fucked up. Rather than being like, oh, but like devil's advocate, like, <laughs> is it fucked up? And you're like, it is. <laughs> so usually we like to, I like to end the show with one thing that we learned. Allison um, should do a podcast just <laughs> drunk talking about bipolar. <laughs> I think one thing I did learn that I didn't know was that there is this like ability for people to be ostracized that are bisexual. I know that there's infighting in the community itself. Yeah. I know. And that there's what like intolerance in a tolerant community and that mm -hmm. kind of bummed me out. So a takeaway for people watching. The takeaway is is that you can ask these questions, but also just be aware that like your gay friends are tired because they're like answering questions a lot. So like Google it, but also like don't worry about like not knowing everything. Mm -hmm. It's okay not to know everything. Well, thank you guys so much for going. I feel like we had a good time. I had a good time. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if I can stand, but I had a good time. <laughs> well, if you guys want to follow them, please look up Just Between Us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Just Between Us show. She's at Allison Raskin on everything. Streamlined and, it. Yeah, she's really good at branding. And I'm at Gabby Dunn on Twitter and then at Gabby Road on Instagram. I'm at Candy Lowry on Instagram and at the Candace Lowry on Twitter. Oh, You've that's made, very confusing. I don't know Terrible why. Terrible choices. I have two names. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for coming. Oh my Thanks God, thank for you for having, having us. It's so good to see <laughs> you. Yeah, I know. I hope you know we enlightened you. You enlightened us. You enlightened us. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to Pop Sugar Girls Guide and come see me every Thursday, whether you like it or not. So threatening. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye.